It's I not know. just another sale to me. It's taking care of people and being a part of people's lives. You save from babies, and I've been invited to the graduation parties and even Ooh, and even the weddings. What? So uh, that's crazy. We, we call that at Berkshire <laughs> Hathaway the Forever Agent. My name is Kevin McIntosh, and this is the closing table where we talk to experts about their experience in real estate all across the country. Let's go. Welcome back to The Closing Table. I am your host, Kevin C. McIntosh, and joining us on this episode, we have the pleasure of speaking with another top producing real estate professional and expert, Mary Jo Garasha. How are you, Mary Jo? Good. Thanks for having me on today, Kevin. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. As always, we like to thank our guests for accepting our invitation and taking time out of your very busy schedule to be with us. We appreciate that. So Mary Jo, we want to talk about what's going on in your market in real estate, you know, from your expertise, opinion and uh, uh, perspective. But first, let's get into who you are as a person. I like to uh, separate the professional from the person. So in 60 seconds or less, if you can tell us who you are outside of real estate. Uh, thank you for asking. Kind of helps us with our why, why we're in the business too, right? Um, mm -hmm. I am a wife. Um, Chris and I've been married going on 37 years. Pretty proud of that. And we have three adult grown children, uh, two live out of state and uh, one here in Michigan with um, two grandbabies. Nice, nice. Love to hear about uh, our guests just being all family oriented and, and things and things like that so that's always a good thing outside of real estate just being with your family is that's the go-to go-to for me too Gla glad to hear it so mary joe um i want you to kind of give us a, a a briefing of your business if you can and hit on a few key points if you don't mind i want you to tell us about your business but if you can't tell us how long you've been licensed if, if you have a specialty or niche and then get into any notable achievements that you've had throughout your career Thank you. You know, I've been in sales since I've been 20 years old, Kevin, but I made a career change to real estate back in 06. Um, businesses evolved over the years, right? Sellers, buyers. Um, I help everybody. And when I say that, whether it's first time home buyers, stepping up, downsizing, or selling once parents pass away and it's an estate. Um, if you were to ask me a niche market, um, I think because we've lost all of our parents, I really enjoy um, being there for people uh, when they're going through experiences to make things easier, easier in that process. So I do do work with a lot of uh, estates, too. I was just thinking that. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, that is a uh, that's definitely a very. Um, niche market special special market whatever but it, it is nonetheless an audience in a market that needs to be taken care of because it's unfortunate but it's part of life that you will you know uh, unfortunately lose a loved one but in that case that 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 comes with a lot of changes in your life and, and more times than none it, it will come with a, a different change of residence or you know leaving a property or buying a new property wherever the case may be so it's good to hear that we have an agent like yourself that focuses in on that and what's nice um, what's nice too kevin oh, with my resources in the business i have mm -hmm. a different re different uh relationships and i can collaborate so if somebody needs a plumber i have one an electrician a painter a handyman a gardener you know a clean out crew a clean cl cleaning company everything mm -hmm. that goes with it get a survey done if needed so there's there's a lot of behind the scenes to you know get that listing to go live of um, making sure all the due diligence is done the right way i get it i get it yeah good point glad you added that in there too so Mary Jo, before we get too far into the business and things that's going on, can you talk about your market? I want you to describe your market. This is a two-part question. One, describe it. 
geographically. So just talk about the surrounding areas, the uh, notable landmarks, things to do, whatever your market is known for. Then get into the real estate side of it. If you have any uh, statistics or data uh, pertaining to your market, please. So I serve as the entire greater Lansing area, but my license is in the state of Michigan. So I'm okay mm -hmm. if I go outside of our three, four counties right around here. Um, I travel to Portage to see family every week. I have family in Detroit. I've been known to help people for lakefront properties, even up north. So my market is the greater Lansing area, but our company mm -hmm. is global. So I can do referrals out of state and find the right agent for people and, um, in screen people to do a referral so hey somebody gets tired of winter coming up and wants to go to arizona we have a we have an alliance there or florida or just anywhere some changes we're seeing here on the market right now it's a good thing for buyers what that means um gavin is there's more homes right now than there has been all of 2023 on the market so for buyers you know, even though interest rates are hiked up a little bit, everybody that's busy with back to school, hey, they're not looking as much right now. So buyers that have taken a little break, you know, homes are staying on the market a little longer. Mm -hmm. We're seeing more price reductions right now. And uh, it's a good time to buy real estate. Yes, yes. Great points that you made, too, by the way. See, and I just talked about this a while ago. Me living in the Lansing area, there's a few homes around where I live that I see have been going that went up for sale a couple of weeks ago. And they're still on the market now. And, you know, it's interesting because in the beginning of the year, those probably would have been gone within a week or so. You're two weeks tops. But nowadays, like you said, starting to see a little shift in the market. You're right, Kevin. Whether I list a Lansing mm -hmm. home, an East Lansing home, Greater Grand Ledge or DeWitt, they are staying a little bit longer on the market. Correct, correct, correct. Great observation. Let's talk about a story or a time where you had a seller who had an emotional attachment to their home, especially with you dealing with estates and things of that nature. I'm pretty sure you have. Can, uh, can you talk about how you actually helped them navigate the process of letting go and moving on? Yeah, you know, that's uh, people really matter to me, right? Taking care of people. And um, mm -hmm. I had this woman in the St. John's community. She had a beautiful uh, five-acre parcel, uh, nice barn, animals, did a lot of homesteading there, raised her family there. So you talk about moving on. You know, the kitties didn't want to leave the house. They got kind of stuck up in the ductwork up there and things. So we had to navigate the, the process there. Um, mm -hmm. what I, what I, uh, did for her there moving out of the area, maybe the Gladwin community is, uh, used again, my resources to find an agent that was a good fit for her to listen to her patient kind and being able to find the buyer on our, on our team as well. So we were able to coordinate things to make the process smooth for her so she felt at ease good. and comfortable. Good. Mm -hmm. Because going through that process while dealing with that situation, you just imagine like it's just a lot and it can, it just adds on to the stress. So, you know, yeah. you being a, a professional that makes it a lot more smooth and then be someone that they can talk to during that process too is very, very important. From, very important. from the barn animals to the chickens, to the yep, cats, to yep. the home, mm -hmm. to the downsizing, every step of the way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Well, September, and I'm just finding this out, September is National Preparedness Month. Very interesting. So uh, emergency preparedness is often extends beyond just helping these older, helping older adults or the elderly um, prepare for emergencies or having supplies on hand. How do you see the role of a real estate agent in assisting clients with long-term preparedness for their homes, considering factors like location-specific risks and age-in-place considerations? 
I really like that question, too, because I do believe mm -hmm. the longer people can stay in their homes that they feel comfortable with, you know, for slip and falls, for showering, but to be able to make the things safe and to make sense, you know, making sure that the washer and dryers on the first level, you know, taking out the carpet hazards to flooring. So again, having the resources to put the bars in people's home, remove different things, make things accessible. Um, and then again, having the professionals kind of in my tool belt, so to speak. So if they're looking at options for caring for older parents, what is best on their budget and where is best for that to be? So I do yes. do a lot of consulting with people. Mm, yes. And, I, and like I said, I'm just learning this uh, as of recently that September is National Preparedness Month. And it, it's, it's great that, that we have a month for people to kind of be aware of this type of thing because dealing with situations I, and preparedness can range from anything, like we said, from preparing the elderly or older adults to dealing with, you know, self-care and, and, and things that they may have to deal with inside a home, going up and down the stairs, accessing things, all the way to, all the way to you know, making sure your home and your family is prepared for natural disasters. Just any and everything, making sure you're stocked up on supplies and, and, and stuff like that. So all of that is very, very important. Not too many people think of that. So to have a real estate agent that also, you know, is, is recognized as National Preparedness Month can pass that on to their clients and then help them get ready also. Yeah, it's, it's better to be able to plan your next steps instead of leaving it for mm -hmm. somebody else to do. You know, why not, you know, people work hard all their, all their life and why not plan for the changes, how they want to see their future of what brings them joy, where they want to watch their TV, what they want to look at, the conveniences of shopping and dining and doctors and everything that goes with it. It's not just a home, it's a community and network around them. No, no, great point. They, 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 they also say you get ready so you don't have to, you stay ready so you don't have to get ready. And if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So that goes ahead and tells you right there. Make sure you have a plan in place and you are prepared for certain situations. Mary Jo, have you ever come across a property in your career that has some type of fascinating history or unusual background to it that you found out and you kind of use that information to leverage uh, this intriguing aspect to generate interest from potential buyers. Glad you asked that question. Exciting today, I got a new one in DeWitt, St. John's Schools. This house was built in the 1870s for a farmer mm. that built this home a New York farmer for his bride. So it was called a wedding house. So this uh, particular parcel was petitioned, um, partitioned off uh, two and a half acres or, or two and a quarter acres. And um, it is super, it's called a wedding house. And um, hmm. just lots of memories, lots of generations in there in lots of vision that somebody could have, whether they want to have it for a homesteading property, um, bed and breakfast, all kinds of opportunities. Mm, mm, yeah, yeah. So is it still like, you say it was built in 1870, so is it still kept up? kept up and is it still being used today for those purposes well the parent it's an estate and so it took uh, a it took yeah. a few years uh for the family to get it cleared out and uh ready for presenting as it is today um right. so it could be right now somebody could move in and just kind of dabble at their um project as they want or it's something that somebody could take some time to renovate it to make it in the pristine condition that they chose. Mm, mm. So it has a lot of potential. It's like a blank canvas right now. Mm -hmm. Charm, character, nice. plus vision. 
Mm, there exactly that vision part, yeah. right? Very, very important. I see. I see throughout your career, you 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 serve luxury buyers and sellers as well as first time uh, home buyers, relocating clients. You know, so you have a wide range of skills and uh, adaptability, nonetheless. But can you provide an example of a situation where you had to switch gears from going from like a, a luxury listing to assisting a first time home buyer to maybe relocating any type of switch gears? And can you talk about how you successfully manage these diverse client needs? Sure, that's fun too. Thinking of this past week, I was out with a uh, family, and when I met that met this young lady, she was in her early twenties buying a house in Lansing, and um, mm-hmm. that's really cool, right? Early twenties, mm-hmm. and then they grew their family, and uh, there are f- uh, six people in the house now, two large dogs. So transitioning them to get approved with a lender for that bigger home that they have a vision to be in for the holidays. And, um, you know, I had the privilege of meeting the first child, but now to see where they are in their lives, you know, uh, a larger family and to be a part of people's journey. You know, it's not just another sale to me. It's taking care of people and, um, and being a part of people's lives. So you think of you as the forever agent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, almost like an aunt. I'm like the uh, aunt, aunt agent. <laughs> uh, auntie real estate agent in a way. But yeah, I've heard that story so many times where, you know, it's just natural. If, if you're really being a human being with feelings and you're really building a rapport with people, you're building a relationship, you will get to a point to where you are, you know, meeting their kids like, You know, if you're meeting a woman who's pregnant when you first get them their home, but then later on down the line, you get invited to, you know, their baby shower and things like that. And then you help them upgrade to a bigger home. You become part of their family. You become part of their story. You know what, You can take a lot of pride in that. You say from babies, and I've been invited to the graduation parties and even even the weddings. What? So uh, That's crazy. We we call that at Berkshire Hathaway the forever agent. And uh, to me, it doesn't matter if they're what they're buying, whether it be a whether it be a smaller house or a luxury house. I just mm-hmm. appreciate that they remember me and refer me to their friends and family. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You got to appreciate that. That's that's the best compliment them referring you to other people who who they love and and are friends with. Yeah. Them also, so. You know, people meet a lot of people, you know whether it be through the different networks or channels, but um, kind of want to be a household name, right? Homes by Mary Jo mm-hmm. and been around a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, there you go. There you go. Keep putting in that work. It's right there. Uh, so reflecting back on some transactions, can you recall a situation where you had to navigate the purchase or sale of a property with the complex legal or zoning restrictions? And how did you guide your clients through the process to make a successful transaction. Experience does matter in this business. So to have some hindsight ahead of time, um, you know, somebody wants to sell a home and you start doing your initial research and you're thinking, wow, the person that called you really doesn't have um, authority to sign this purchase. Then again, with experience knowing what Um, paperwork is needed to get that in order. So what I'll do is um, preliminary title work with our title company, identifying what paperwork is needed needed to get it to the right department to get it cleared. Um, And so we've done that, whether it be um, affidavits, whether it be the authorities to sign clean title clouds on title things not recorded sometimes people try to do shortcuts in and what i mean by that not going about it the right way and it causes problems down the line so Mm -hmm. there's a lot of a lot of steps behind the scenes that a realtor takes care of to get things done the right way yeah absolutely and it's part of your your job 
you know, in a way, if you want to do it the professional way, is to not let your clients know anything that is going on when there are hiccups. You just go ahead and you iron those out. But like you said, it comes with experience to know how to handle these certain situations. You could be a real estate agent or a professional and deal with clients or deal with situations where it goes by smooth. And that's good for you. But when something does happen and you don't, you're not familiar with how to handle it, you have no experience there, then that could hold you up way more than a person who has had like different transactions with hurdles to overcome. And they're a lot more familiar. They use a lot less brain power to kind of solve problems. And that comes with experience. Like yeah, kind of like your, uh, your yellow shirt there reminded me as I'm uh, chatting with you this morning, we just try to look like a duck on what duck on water. Cause all kinds of things uh, come our way, but we just, um, get right through it i'm i'm a old-fashioned note taker and check off yeah. the list girl yeah no that's good that's good I, I that's how i am too like to write it down scratch it off and, and make sure i'm i'm still moving forward that is so funny that you brought up duck this is like the third episode we had a duck analogy really <laughs> that is hilarious yes that's like the third time in a row we've had a duck analogy it must be something to it i don't know i i gotta go look this up I love that, though. So I want to talk about your experience a little bit more with this, right? I want you to reflect because you've been in sales since going way back, if I'm not mistaken, since the 80s, since you've been in sales. Yeah, eight, so, 85, actually. Nice, nice, nice. 1985, I have that as a note. So a lot of experience behind you, Bill. How has the real estate industry evolved over the years? And how do you incorporate your extensive background in sales to provide a unique perspective for your clients in today's market? Yeah, I guess, I guess seek to, seek to understand. Try to, sometimes you have to see what people aren't telling you because sometimes what they tell mm. you at first and the way things go is a little bit different. And I think over the past few years, there's more more of that too with demands and, and things and expectations of people. So I think just being all hands on deck for people um, to know that you're approachable, you know, this is a seven day a week job. So me and my business partner, you know, we're, we're there to help. Yeah. Yeah, well said, well said. And that's good that you have that that type of skill and that experience because, like we said before, it just gives you the ability to adjust to different situations and actually uh, be able to pass that information forward to your client and, and get through these type of hurdles and wrinkles without anybody being aware of certain things. Yeah, so, you want to be great. able to um, support the one of the biggest purchases by giving them the information to make an informed decision mm -hmm. for their usage now or in the future. Correct. Correct. Absolutely. I, that's the best thing that you can give somebody knowledge to make, you know, informed decisions, especially in that situation. Mary Jo, this is a question I'm pretty sure a lot of home buyers and uh, potential, maybe even sellers may be interested in well, knowing what you know now and the resources that are available. If you are a first time home buyer in today's market, what approach would you take to owning a home in 2023? You know, pay your bills on time um, so you don't mess up your credit. Establish credit mm. at a young age, whether parents need to, um, you know, take the steps with, with somebody that's 18 years old, whether it's like, hey, don't be stupid the way I was and, you know, mm -hmm. and things, but sometimes, you know, I'll work with people that are college educated, they have student loan debt, but they never had any credit, you know, so mm -hmm. there's, yeah. there's early on tips that people can um, do when they're 18 to establish credit. So owning that a uh, home, the American dream of home ownership, that why rent when you can own you know, it's important to, to take those uh, steps. And real estate is always a good investment. It just depends Absolutely. if people buy it the right way going in. Yep, absolutely. And that credit is one of the major 
pieces of the entire transaction that's going to make a, a big determination on not only if you qualify, but how much you qualify for and your interest rate and your payments and, and all of that. So uh, that's a great place to start with your credit, making sure it's in order and making sure it's definitely, you know, everything's paid on time. So great, great information, Mary. Uh, Mary Jo, we appreciate you so much. Thank you for pulling up a chair to the closing table. At this point, if you have any last words and or want to tell people how to reach out to you, please do so now. Thank you for reaching out to me today to be on your podcast. And the easiest way to always reach me is on my cell phone and by text message on my cell phone, which is 517-881-3158. Nice, nice. Thank you again, Mary Jo. We appreciate you so much. And for our YouTube audience watching right now, if you've gotten to this point in video, do us both a favor. Hit the like button, please, and thank you. Make sure you also share the content and subscribe to our channel. And if you are listening on Apple, Spotify, or any other podcast platforms, please do the same. Give us a like, a five-star rating, and subscribe for our latest content. And Mary Jo, I'm going to leave our audience with a question before they leave the chat. That way we can get their brains going. So this is for you, audience. In honor of National Preparedness Month, which is September, how have you prepared your home to handle emergencies? Don't tell us now. Leave it in the comments below. Besides that, we'll talk to you next time.